Hi there, welcome back to Brickwright. My name's Justin, Brad's behind the camera. And if you've been on the channel before, great. Keep them comments coming because I really appreciate you interacting with us. If you're new to the channel, then welcome. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. But we're here, we're on a curved wall, and this is, the, this is what is gonna be the curved wall system going through. We've dug these foundations out with a mini digger and a little bit by hand as well. So that's out, so key little points to to give you some guidance on this is we've dug this wider so this section here is a little bit wider because our brickwork is 225 mil thick that's the brickwork so by the time you overlap your your your, your toe on your foundations you're going to be looking around about 450 500 mil wide so we've, we've dug these a little bit wider and to do reason for that is is when we go around the curve we'll see the customer and if she wants to change the curve, or we need to change the curve, because the bond doesn't allow us to, to fit, we've got that little bit of movement on the foundation to be able to change what we're gonna do in the brickwork. The depth, really, <clears throat> you want a, a minimum of around 100 mil, 150 mil thick for your foundations, because this wall is only gonna be a dwarf wall. It's only gonna come up to about by here, so it's nothing major. And that's it, so we've dug that through, we squared it all up, it's on nice solid ground. And then the next bit, which is now going to be tomorrow, will be uh, as concrete in it. And then maybe a couple of steps in it. We'll go through it tomorrow. So here we are then. So what we've got going on. So last day, the day before we break up on holiday. So uh, trying to get motivated, didn't we? Mm -hmm. So here we are. So what we've got going on. This is the foot in. You've seen the, uh, the dig out yesterday that we did. So we've got steps in the foundation. And I'll explain why. So if your ground is kind of exaggerated, if it's like that, you can't put your foundation in out of level. You've got to put your foundation in level. So every time you go into the banking, into this, which is your, 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 your kind of slope that you're working to, every time you go into that, your concrete is getting thinner. So when it starts to become thin, and if it starts to become below the thickness of 150 mil, you've then got to overlap it. So if I was going to put a step on this bit now, then what I'd be looking to do, I'd be looking to put my next level of a step of concrete, say about by here, because you're always overlapping your step. Now that's what we've done on this one. We would normally put some bricks across here to stop this overflowing, but we ain't gone them, Brad, have we? No. We have got blocks and we were going to disc cut them down, but we're too lazy to do that as well, aren't we? Yeah. So what we're going to do, we've laid this like this, we'll tidy this up at the end, so what you want, this is going to be a brick wall, so the distance from the underside of your spirit level to the top of your concrete that you've already laid is 75 mil. So the theory behind that is 65 mil for your brick and 10 mil for your horizontal bed joint to equate to 75 mil. So we step that at 75 mil. What we've got this side now, look, where the full mix has ended. So if you come up here, right? The measurement from here to the underside of the ground is 150 millimeters. So at this point, we don't have to step it up. So when we do have to step it up, we'll go through the process of what we do to step it up on the next bit. There we are, what's the next mix going in? So we'll show you what we're gonna do with that now. And if it works out another step, then uh, at some point, we will be obviously showing you another step because the ground's sloping up there, the way we've dug it out and the way the ground is sloping anyway. So let's get on with it. This mix has gone in. We've tamped it down with the edge of the rake. So let's put it down and tamp it down into the right position. So then the next thing you do is put your spirit level on it. So come close to this now, look, Brad. And when you do this for as long as I have, um, you tend to get a, an eye to tell you where level is so I have that's the first time I've put the spirit level on it so it's just a bit of luck really Brad isn't it mm. so that's a tiny little bit high this end so all you need to do use the level right to tamp it down get it all into place put your level on it and I'm slightly low now that end but if that happens just don't panic don't panic because you take your level off, grab some concrete, start again, get your level back on there, slightly now, right? There we 
we go. So we're now level. So that's all level coming up there now. You've got your first step. So now we're on to this bit. We're going to take my there, Brad. There you go. Thank you very much. So now all you do is if you come here, put that level, hang your level over, onto there, and then you measure that. And we are now 120 millimeters. So what we'll do now, is we'll get another step by here because the minimum the minimum for a, a little wall like this is probably about a hundred mil i like to do it 150 mil because i like to just overdo it i think if you're going to put a foundation in then put a foundation in and make it sturdy make it you know last forever type of thing so we will now put a step here and that will continue up here so when brad's put the next mix on we'll uh, we'll get onto that so brad's putting the mix on now so just quickly We've been through mixes and everything before on previous videos, so we're not going to harp on about the mixing. So what we've got here, in, in this area, we call this All In. Um, God knows what they call it through other parts of the, the, the UK, but in, in Wales it's called All In. So what it is, it's a pre-mixed product of like a chip-in, which is this bit. So that's your chip-in, like a 10 mil, 12 mil chip-in, and then it's mixed in with sharp sand. So, all you do with that is you just basically put in four shovelfuls of that with one shovelful of cement and then that formulates the uh, the concrete mix or if you're purchasing it separate then you would put in four shovelfuls of sand one shovelful of your chippings and then um, two shovelfuls of chippings and one shovelful of cement and, that, and that's basically your mix so Brad will mix that up now we'll wait for him to do that and then we'll um, We'll check it in and show you the next step. Let's finish that mix now. That's been put in. If you come a bit closer, look, Brad. So if you remember, we had 120 millimetres from there to the ground, from the level. I'm going to push the level over. So we don't have to go overlapping it to here. So we're looking for 150 mil. So as long as I put 30 mil on top of that little bit there, that's your 150 mil. So thickness on this bit, we don't have to go overlapping it that much. So what we'll do, we don't want to use too much concrete. So we'll put this in here. Now to form your steps, what you could do, right, and we've done this, say you're doing, this is a little, just a little footing in it, but say you're doing a big footing and you've got 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 meters of a, of a wall going up a banking. And what we've done before, if, if you put some shuttering in, you can make this, you could cut that to 75 mil, which is your step for you have to work out your brickwork. And then you can put that in there with some shuttering and some, a bit of batten. So when you fill up to your um, to each step, that shutter is already set. So you just lay your concrete level to the top of that. So we've done that before, haven't we? Yeah. But to do that and to do that accurately, you need like a laser level to be able to transfer your levels and your measurements or, or a dumpy level or something like that, or um, a spirit level. But you've got to be precise with that because if you lose 10 mil on each one, by the time you get to the top, you're gonna to have to cut your brick in half and you don't want to be doing that, do you? So, we're not doing that on this occasion, so we're getting that there now. We just need to get that roughly to 75 mil. So that's roughly 75 mil there. Now, just go grab the rake. Two seconds. I've got the rake now. All I'm doing now, just using the old tradesman's eye, you know, just to get that level. Obviously, we will be putting the spirit level on it. So, tap four works out. It's key you tamp it all down because you don't want any air pockets in your concrete. It's causing like honeycomb in. If you're doing this on a big scale, you could get a poker vibrator. So, if you want to like, get all the air pockets out of your concrete, Google poker vibrator and that will tell you exactly what that machine is and what it does. So, my bricklayer's eye is telling me that that's done, or near and near enough. See how good my eye is now, is it? Right, so slightly high, which is, which is if, if anything, that's what you want, right? So before we go any further, just measure what you've got there, and I've got 65 mil. So in fact, 
this ends a little bit low and this ends a little bit high so take your time don't panic if you panic laying concrete it'll all go wrong get that there where you want it Got just over 75 mil now. So final little adjustments. What I'm doing now, I'm putting more pressure on this side than I am the other side, because that's what I want it to do. So that's bang on level there now. And we've got bang on 75 mil there. So that step is done. So move on to the next one. And what we'll do, when the concrete sets a little bit, we will clean these edges up. But nobody's going to see it, we're laying it below ground. There we go, same process. Brad just put the mix on, I just laid it, and then Brad's putting the mix on. I get a little five minutes now, and then he gets a little five minutes while I get in there and faff about and put it down where it's got to go. So, so to find out now if we need another step on this last little bit, that's level, as you know, you've just seen that. So I've got my spirit level on there, and I just need to get my spirit level here, level. So once I do that, I can then measure down We've got 155 mil there, and at this top end is 130 millimeters. And what happens in this bit up here, look, the ground kind of goes up like this. So this bit here will mean that by the time we put concrete on there, we may only end up with like 70 mil of concrete on there. So that's not enough. So what I'm going to do, off camera, we're going to pick this out, and we're going to dig this out. We're going to make it a little bit deeper, recheck our level. And then once we know we've got the minimum of 150 mil through there, we'll take that through level. We won't need another step, Brad, will we? No. Oh. So there we are. We've dug this out now. All that's been dug out. So that's more than the 150 mil. So I've got my level on it. And you just go back to the same process again now. Just get your mix. The Brad is kindly, expertly made for me. Obviously, if you're doing this on your own, you won't have a Brad. So you'd have to do the mixes on your own. process we'll tamp that we'll level that all right you can see now uh we're fresh back off holiday first day back it's wednesday we had monday and tuesday because it was so hot so we're back are we fresh faced and ready to go sort of <laughs> anyway this is the curve wall we've set this out now meticulously with a customer i think what i've done is i've maximized um what curve we can get in a stretcher bond um because you've got to be careful because you do get that kind of like 50 pence piece look which we obviously don't want so we've had the client out she's done it with us and uh signed it off um i suppose the only other way we could have got over it which you did give the option to was to cut the ball in half or, or build the wall completely in uh in headers and that would have given us um a more of a severe curve but she didn't want that look so i think it's going to look all right we'll get the first course in get the second course in, have a little look check it see what our plumbing points are like and what we'll do, we get the two courses in and uh, show you them. But we're not going to be going crazy today. We're just going to have a mellow, nice, chilled out, easy day back. There we are then. But at the point now, we've got it set out two courses. So what's that? Three. So it's five courses down here. We've set it out because we've got to go up two steps in the foundation. So at the top, we're on two courses. So in effect, that now is all set up. Um, I think we're only going up about 600 mil. So that's it. Let me just show you what it's like from this side so that's what it's like coming around i think we pretty much maximized what we could do in stretcher bond as i said with this curve so a customer's been out she's happy always important that when you do these curve walls um just to keep an eye with your customer with your clients and make sure that they're uh, we're happy with it because you don't want to be building this and then say well hang on a minute i'd rather it go out a little bit or be changed a little bit so She's happy, so I know now, I've got full confidence in building that, that I know at the end, she's gonna be pleased with it. So that's a top tip for you. So I'll give you another couple of top tips now. We wait, Brad's putting a mix on, get him out of the mixer, and then, uh, well, he's not in the mixer. Well, he could be. If he carries on the way he's been operating, you will, I will put you in the mixer. How was your holiday, Brad? Bloody lovely. Look, the incredible Hulk with that ripped shirt on there. Yeah. Just a different color, your blue, he's green. Too tight to buy new tops. 
We've got a new tops coming today, actually. Yeah, I know, I'm winding up. You horrible man. Anyway, I've had two weeks of not winding you up, so I'm going to be tomorrow. I'm going to leave you alone today. Yeah, tomorrow, leave me alone. tomorrow, I'm going to be straight after you, mate. Aye. <laughs> sure, at least some bricks on the curve now. So usually I'd be stood up laying these, but for the purpose of uh, of you people on there to to get me and everything in, I'm going to kneel down on this little mat. So what you want to do? So we've laid all this. We're just carrying on now. So get your bed on. And top tip for you, when you're using these, these are like a Staffordshire Blue engineering brick. So these bricks will stain quite a lot. So Brad knows the score. So what we've done, we've mixed this up. It's nice and fluffy, but as you can see, it's quite stiff, fluffy, because what we don't want to do, if it's wet, you'll end up staining all the bricks. So that's first. So carry on. Get your bed on. And... I normally lay about four, five bricks out before I start leveling. So, wall tight. That's the type of block we're in, it's going to go behind. So just I'm struggling to get used to this new trowel. Which you haven't shut up about. <laughs> Which I haven't said a word about. Nope. Some absolute lunatic. Lost it. Bradley. Yeah. Right, so, curb your brick up. Get your brick on. Now what you're looking for, is obviously get your perps perpendicular. And you're just laying these now. It would be a lot easier if I was stood up, so I could look straight down there. But, just lay these. You want to try and lay these. Level that way. And level this way. And just getting your arises to line up. Arises of the brick, in case you don't know, is that bit, that's an arris. So you want the bricks to be lining up like that. You don't want it like that. You don't want it like that. You want it to be lined up. So that's basically what I'm doing. So there's two. So keep going. Flip them up. Just get them roughly level. So, last one now. And if you've got, if you've got any chips in your brick, play that one there, chuck it away. Start again. Right. So we've got our four bricks in now. Excuse the uh, scrap old iron man in the background. <laughs> <laughs> it's always the same when trying to do a video, isn't it? Van locked. I know, I know. They're a bug. So, what you do now, if you come a little bit closer, look, Brad. So what we're doing now, look, is always back to college days. Don't let your level just in, but every bricklayer does. So, just give your level, just a couple of quick taps. Any severe taps, don't hit your level. Right. So get each brick level. So we're level. That's phase one done. So what you do now, or what I always tend to do, you don't have to do this on every brick. Get it level this way. And what that does. It just stops your bricks from tilting. Do you want to press pause a minute, Brad? <laughs> Free collection, scrap old iron, batteries, boilers, dishwashers. Radiators. Radiators. Anyway, <laughs> good good luck to them, innit? Um, so there, where are we, where are we? So we've levelled that. Sorry about the disruption with them guys. So we've levelled that across that way. That's done. Now, what you want to do is you want to get your boat level. Or, if you're higher up the wall, you use this level, but we're still in boat level territory here. You just want to get your boat level on in each corner of the brick. Just level that, or plumb it rather. Get it, plumb on every corner of the brick. And that's it. And then we just go again. So we'll go again, and now I am going to stand up. 
and I'm going to get out the way. You get out the way. You don't want me landing on top of you, Brad. No. Don't know anyone near me. All this holiday weight I got um, bouncing around in front of me. I think my chin and my stomach has become one now. Mm. Or my chins and my stomach has become one. No, I just one big chin now. Nice. So again, get your bed on. Wall tight. Yeah. I just lay it to Y because you can adjust it with a level. And I'm going all the way down to the floor for my bricks, Brad. Well, you are on the last course. Last but one. Last but one. You only need you only need X amount of bricks for the day. To need more than what you need. Another top tip: give yourself a good lay, Brad. To stack your bricks up, so you don't have to bend down all the way to the floor, Brad, innit? <laughs> don't build a wall which is 300 mil high. Do you know any good labourers, Brad? God knows. You're going to say how I taught you, it's my fault, isn't it? Mm. <laughs> I'm going right. to lose that trouble now. It's the same thing, don't you dare. You'll have, oh, to, have, a, to, you'll have to have a wooden handle one, uh, wooden handle one next week now. <laughs> what would that do? <laughs> Be crap for you, break your wrist. Oh, you're trying to make it worse for me now, are you? Yeah, why not? Yeah, typical, typical. Um, if you wonder why your tyres are flat when you get home, Brad, <laughs> it, might, it could well have been me. Mm. Anyway, right, so... Keep tapping away, get these level, there we go, level. You could, in theory, when you're plumbing the bricks this way, if you look, if you come really, really close to this, Brad. I don't want to come too close, I might get okay. a bald spot. A bald spot? See that spot on top of there, it's bald. Bold what spot. are you talking about, Brad? That's why I always have you facing this way, not coming over this way, so you can't see mm. it, can't see? You can see it. You can see that when you're levelling a, levelling a brick, or plumbing a brick, look, right? Yeah, I'll come to you, look. You want the level plumb, and you want it to be touching the brick. If the level's plumb, and you've got a little gap, exaggerated like that, or you've got a gap like that, then obviously the brick's tilted. So in theory, you don't really have to level them on top of that, that way, but do you know what? Old habits, I just do it. People are gonna say, what the hell are you doing? But to all those people. So, back to this way. Plum, two plumbing points per brick, right the way through. There we go, there we go, that's plum. Now then, if you carry on doing that, you will get a nice curved ball, but it's all in the setting now. Now another way to check this, if you come down here, bro, I'll just show them that there. That's spot on level there, isn't it? Yeah, you're, no on, ball spot in the you're on my ball ba patch now, aren't you? Oh, I had to. Mm, you had to, didn't you? Looks like one of those little uh, chaffinch nests, doesn't it? It looks like a little bird nest, doesn't it? Yeah. Bloody right. So that's level. And then, if you keep your level here, you put that on there, if you have a look at that now, look, then that's level. So if you carry on twisting your level around doing that all the way through, you'll know it's level. Or if you're posh and you've got a, a laser level, or if you're a jippo like us, you've got a dumpy level, then you could put a dumpy level on it and um, transfer your levels over and make sure it's level coming through if you're doing a massive curved wall. So hyperspace time for the last course. <laughs> part of it now so if you come a little bit closer Brad what you want to do little tip for you 
that hasn't been laid very long so your finger can go in there quite easily so that's still a little bit wet these ones down the bottom look my fingers are not going in there at all I'm probably left that just a little bit long that's how you want it like that so you can just about see an indentation of your finger once you get to that point you know it's ready to join so what you do i've got a couple of little tricks probably other bricklayers use them as well but this is what we do or what i do so always perp joints first we'll get a couple of them then ahead we'll go slow right so we'll just strike your joint in bar you can either use the heel which is this bit or you can use that bit the further you get up a wall you might want to use the heel i tend to use this bit doing perp joints so you get a couple ahead and then i'll just keep going like that so if there's a little bit dry and then what you want to do with this because your bricks are going around a curve then what you'll get you will get a couple of bricks sticking out so see that sticking out there can't help it because we're telling, telling bricks to go around a sharp curve so what you do get a heel of your jointing bar and you angle the jointing bar in this case that's sticking out a little bit so if you come right close Brad what I'll do look so that's sticking out just ever so slightly so what I'll do is I'll angle my jointing bar from that position to this I'm turning it so just turn the jointing bar so what I'm doing is that joint now is disguising that so when I'm doing this constantly angling the jointing bar to disguise my joint so that tiny tiny little brick is sticking out that you can't help we're trying to get rid of it so that's what we're doing and you just carry on going like that what we'll have to do we'll have to wait for this top course this one just to set a little bit and you just because this is the most severe part now brad of the curve here isn't it mm -hmm. right. same thing get in back You can see the bits and you can feel it on the jointing bar when you need to twist. Once you've twisted and then go twist back the other way, I just find it just helps the size. That little, see we've got this sticking out. We have maximised this curve. Right, I can guarantee you when we've jointed it, and you look at it, you won't be able to see anything. It's a little bit wet now this one. Of course it's still a little bit wet, but the bottom is absolutely fine. So again, these are engineering bricks, so you don't want to go nuts with it. If it was like a and again, like an LBC or something with a bit of dust on the bricks, you could really give it a good brush. But use this part of the brush, that part of the brush there, and just gently brush it off. You can go like a 45 degree angle if you want to. And you just do it gently. And then when you get used to it, you can go both ways then. And just getting all the little snobs off and again you've got to do this you've got to brush at the right time when it's dry enough to brush so once you've jointed it depending on the weather conditions give it a little bit of time just to just for the snobs to dry off so that when you brush it you don't brush it into the brickwork so keep going none of this has been brushed and i'm emphasizing that top course you turn around bro that top course is a little bit wetter so I'm mindful of that and that's it when you finish jointing always go over your work stand back have a little look make sure like see this little bit by here now if you come close Brad 
I've dragged that with a brush, look. So I've dragged it with a brush, just to emphasize it. I dragged it, so you can see, I've started to pull the joint out of it. So we'll go back over this little bit now, and a few other little bits. You can see the brush marks in here, look. See that? That's because that's a little bit wet. So we'll go back over that now with a jointing bar off camera. Get that right, but that's why you need, when you finish your jointing, stand back, have a little look at it, go over these little bits. So tomorrow we will, have a day off Brad, is it? <laughs> tomorrow we put the block work at the back and some brick work and we get the brick on edge on. He's back, welcome back to the one arm Bandit. How was your holiday, Frey? It was good. What'd you buy me? Didn't buy you anything. Absolutely nothing. Bloody typical, innit? Anything back with you from Portugal? I did. Do you want to show the viewers what you brought back from Portugal? Look at them pegs. Look at them bad boys. <laughs> it's the same colour as the end of the Marshall Town Troller. Anyway, how's your ankles? Burnt. Yeah. Everything's he's burnt. walking along like a bit of a bit of a weirdo because the tops of where your laces are and your boots have all burnt there as well, haven't they? And I've had that, so it's really painful. How is the wrist doing, mate? It's better. Yeah? Put this on just in case. Yeah? You excited to see your father back now? You excited to see me? Not really. Though. Not really? I no? And uh, are you excited to be back and carry on with work? Yeah. You are. You lying little git. Right, let's get on with it then. Yeah, just putting the back of the wall in now. Building up the levels. Straight back into it, Frey. How long was, was you off? About six weeks, was it? Six, seven weeks, I think, yeah. Six, seven weeks. Bloody killed me, you're off, Frey. Might be days. We're on to the brick on edge bit now. So we've done all this already. The phrase will uh, show you there. So that's already been done. So the principle of brick on edge is, we have shown you this before, but we'll show again. So we've got the bed down. Now, when you're laying brick on edge to a curve, get your, get your perp joint on. And then all I'm doing is I'm laying that brick on there and the trick is move that up a little bit so I can show you right the trick is with the head of the brick here what I actually want to do I want this side of the head of the brick and this side of the head of the brick both flush with the brick below don't want to be laying it so one's flush look so that's flush and that's sticking out so what I'm doing is I'm following the curve as I'm going by looking down it. So that's the first brick on. So same thing as the curve. I tend to do like four or five. We'll carry on with four or five. Try and get a full joint on your perp joints as well. So we'll just chuck that in. And it's a combination of getting it in the right place. You're opening one end and closing the other end and you don't want one too big or too small. So. There are quite a few things going on with this. So there's two. Same again. Perp. And then just we're on the, the most severe part of the curve now. By doing this as well, I'm also trying to keep bond with my bricks below because it's three per brick three bricks of brick on edge to one brick but i got a half down there so i really want to be creeping these forward so that that bricks over that perp joint here like that so i'm trying to creep forward as well as trying to share my joints out to get it around the curve show him over there free Look at that, yet again, all you people, comment below, why do I pay this man? And I'm just at the buying bloody dinner as well. So what have I done today? Yeah. Absolutely nothing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he 
he, he puts himself in the crap, doesn't he? So what have I done today then? He, obviously he's given me license then to say absolutely nothing, and he? You drop yourself in it, you do, Brad. But you know I haven't. You know I, you know you I, know you I haven't, haven't done anything. anything. <laughs> 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 oh God. Yeah, I know you haven't done anything, Bradley. Yeah. Right. So there's your fourth. Again, same principle. And then drag your level over. So I'm high. We just keep doing this now. Probably put a little bit too much bed on there. Get it down. So it's level. And then all you need to do is just get that on there and plumb everyone. Plumb everyone. Ooh. And there we have it. That's up to do with a brick or edge. If I'm critical, the mix is a tiny little bit wet, but we'll live with that. Again, that's his bloody fault, that idiot still. They're still sat by there doing nothing. But um, we'll carry on. I'll we'll put you on a time lapse. Jet planes in the night sky with you. Getting high in the sunrise with you. Getting through all the bad times with you. I wasn't missing a thing, no, I do And I wish that I could be to see Cause time moves on And now you're gone Oh, if only I could be to see I'd come and get you I can't forget you D&J projects. Uh, I've seen them at the show on the weekend with the building A&E teaching the youngsters and they said they sent a load of people from their um, channel over to our channel and I think at the moment we've had about uh, 400, 450 subscribers come over from D&J. So welcome to all those people who've kindly subscribed to the channel. Thank you to Stevie and uh, and Dave and uh, yeah maybe we'll ask some Brickwright uh, followers to um, go over and sign up to a D and J because it's a great channel, great lads, father and son, superb. Same as we got here, father and sons, isn't it Brad? Mm. Mm. So yeah, get over, get on the D and J and sign up and leave a little comment and, and be below. Um Brickwright sent you. I came from Brickwright, something like that, same as they've done. So have a great weekend. See you on the next one. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Cheers. <laughs>